Hello. So here is an infinitely long wire. Uh, we know it's linear charge density. It's some positive charged, uh, infinitely long wire with a uniform charge density. Put pluses everywhere, I guess. Um, pretend those pluses are evenly spaced. And I want to know what the electric field is some distance r away. Okay, so I did this with an integral at one point, but let's use Gauss's law. It's so much easier. Um, yep. So we need to select our Gaussian surface. All right, I'm going to draw this thing from the front. So imagine we, well, you couldn't really get in front of it, could you, because it's infinitely long. But imagine we chopped it in half or something, and we stood and looked at the wire like that. So that's the wire coming at us. And the electric field from this wire, since it's positive, is going to be pointing out in all directions, right? So when you pick your Gaussian surface, you want to make sure you pick one that is, oops, through which all of the electric fields, all the electric field lines pass through at 90 degrees. Okay, and we'll come to the reason for that in a second. So there it is, uh, another circle, basically, a circle that's coaxial with this rod. All right, or a, from this perspective, it's a circle. If you looked at it out here, it would be an infinitely long shell, a cylindrical shell like that, and it would it would go on forever as well. So this is our Gaussian surface because the electric field lines all pass through it perpendicularly. Right, let's move this thing over. So Gauss's law states the surface integral of electric field dotted with the differential piece of area is equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay, well, uh, the nice thing about Gauss's law is you just pick a Gaussian surface such that you don't have to do this integral, because I don't even remember how to do a surface integral. Um, and the other pro another problem is we have this dot product in here of vectors. Okay, well, first of all, remember that we can actually write the dot product as long as we know the magnitudes like this, right, where theta still a surface integral though, where theta is the angle between dA and E. Okay, well dA uh, is a, li it's a little strange, but dA, well that is, it points out of, straight out of the surface. So in our front picture here, every little dA points straight normal out of the surface. So the angle between an electric field line and the nearby dA, the angle is zero. See, they all they point in the same direction. So because of that, the cosine the cosine cosine of zero is one. That just becomes a one. So now we're just looking at the surface integral of e dA. Okay, so it's getting more doable, right? Uh, still a surface integral though. So let's see the electric field. If this is a uniform rod. And our surface is such that, you know, that at any given any given place on the surface, you're the same distance away from the rod. Coaxial basically says it. The electric field is the same everywhere. No matter what spot on the Gaussian surface you're at, no matter where in the area, your electric field is the same. Or in other words, the electric field is a constant with respect to the area. So we can just pull that out of the surface integral. And the surface integral of dA is just A. So if you pick the right Gaussian surface, Gauss's law simplifies down to this. All right, where A is the area of your Gaussian surface. OK, well, mine it would be the surface area of a cylinder minus the ends, because it's infinitely long. So that would be the electric field times, okay, so the, uh, the um, circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, that r in fact, right, because that is the radius of our circle, and then times the length. I know the length is infinite, but bear with me. 
if we could, we'd put the length there. So that's the area of my Gaussian surface. And that has to equal to the enclosed charge, the charge that is the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface over epsilon naught. Now, the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface, well, that's also infinite, right? But we do know the charge density, so we can rewrite that as the linear charge density times the length that gives you the charge, the entire charge, right? Because linear charge density is total charge divided by total length. So if you multiply, um, if you multiply length over, you get charge is equal to the length times charge density. Okay, now looking at either two ends of my equation here. I can cancel the L's and we were looking for the electric field a distance r away. In fact, we found the electric field everywhere on this Gaussian surface which is a distance r away from the center and the, ele the electric field is the same at all these places right? because of the uniformity and the infinite uh, length of the wire. So let's find this electric field, just divide over those numbers, and we get that the electric field is equal to charge density over 2 pi r epsilon naught. And there we have it. So I kind of, I mean, I wanted to explain Gauss's law or how to simplify Gauss's law. I did it in more steps than I needed to, but really this is a, this is a very quick problem. So that's the magnitude of the electric field, a distance r away from an infinitely long charged, um, charged wire or rod of charge density lambda. That's it.